Well, I hope you're not watching this episode for the bushcrafting because there hasn't been a lot of that going on. Tilly and I had a nap just uh, a little while ago after eating our sandwich and having coffee in the pipe there. So, But now I've decided I need to cut up a little bit more wood. I'm not going to use hardly any of it, but it'd be nice to leave some for whoever left me some the last time. Ah, pupper. Uh, I'm going to show you the, a little bit of the lake and you'll see why we decided not really to go anywhere today. We may walk down to the bottom of the island uh, just to have a, have a peek. Uh, it gets pretty scrubby the further down you go though, so we'll see. I mean, it's a beautiful day, about 13 degrees. That little island straight down there, isn't that cool? But that breeze is definitely making it chilly, isn't it, Pup? I think the wind's died a little bit. The water's not as choppy as it was, which is nice. All right, time to process a little bit of firewood. Still haven't sharpened that from hitting it off a rock the last trip. I brought the puck with me, so that might be a job for today. Okay, so we decided we'd go check the rest of this little island out. Um, and probably a little over midway, Tilly's found herself a mass of boulders. She loves to look in the cavey bits. Um, but there's some behind me here. You can see water both sides. I don't know if you could clean this out enough to be, you know, usable. I mean, anywhere you, you could hammock anywhere, of course. God, look at these boulders. Yeah, somebody's using it down here actually because I do see what looks like a fire pit. Lots of bigger boulders. Not Definitely not as easy for traveling around. Although that is really cool. That is super cool. Um, yeah, I still got my long johns on. 45. I've still got to maybe sharpen my axe. I'm going to come in for some. Uh, I might read my book a bit. I'm going to try to delay making supper till closer to 6. And then the plan, I guess, will be to pack as much stuff as I can. I'd like to have everything away that can be away, with the exception of my sleep stuff. The problem is the way I pack my pack is the tent's got to go in first, so I can't really pack everything anyway. But we can make a pretty good, uh, pretty good start on everything. Just so tomorrow morning, I think we're going to do oatmeal and coffee, and then hit the road. Hey, eh? we'll do oatmeal, coffee, hit the road. Do you need me to come help you? All right, just wait. Make it over that. He made it over way worse than that. <laughs> Come on, let's go. Go find camp. Go find it. Well, I'm now in the glamorous process of a YouTuber's life where you struggle to charge all the batteries of all the things you have. Unfortunately, I have way too many things. I've got to cell phone, the batteries for the the audio, three camera batteries. I killed two of them already, so I figured I might as well charge them up as best as I can. And uh, something else, I can't even remember. It's just a constant uh, struggle. I'm trying to get my solar panel to get enough sunlight to charge, but it's kind of going overcast now. I think it'll still work. I've got it out on the rocks right on the water, so. If any sun happens at all, it'll charge as best it can. But right now, I'm going to take my axe puck that weighs whatever, a lot, and I'm going to try to refinish the face of my axe. Oh, 
Well, I figure while I'm sitting here doing this axe refinishing, I might as well have a little bourbon. Wild turkey for the win. Back to the axe. So, how sharp is it? Sharp enough to cut wood. So I mentioned in my last video, the one where I went to Hubley Lake, um, about getting some stuff from Hammock Gear for being a, br a brand ambassador. And this was one of the things, this tarp right here, it's called the Traverse. And fortunately came just after I wrecked my Hennessy, or my Hennessy Hammock um, Hex Fly, which is a fantastic tarp. This one's a lot, um, packs down a lot smaller to different material. It's not gonna be as robust as that other one, but it definitely has quite a few options that I've come to find out that I actually need. I didn't think I needed a tarp for like ground sleeping kind of thing, which is kind of what these are made for. But now that I have it, there's so many uses for it just to, just to have in the pack. And like I said, it packs up pretty small anyway. So this or something like it. I mean, I'm not pushing hammock gear uh, stuff, but I do like all their stuff. Everything I've got from them has been good so far. And so all the lines I've put on this card, I think I talked about this in the Hubley Lake video. So pretty, pretty thrilled with uh, this thing so far. Um, had it on two trips now and it, it's definitely going to stay in the pack no matter what trip I do. So, lines are on. Yeah. Get him. Yeah. Okay. Well, there's my tent. Um, I'm just starting to pack some things away. Just kind of doing some organizing, really. There's the spot we've been hanging out. And right there is our new fire pit, which I don't like as much as the other one, but it's gonna be more sheltered. So I'm gonna start our fire now and get ready for supper. Did you have to pee right there? Was that the only spot? It was the only spot, yeah. My wife, Claire, made me these mittens and uh, they have been the best woods thing with the exception of the woods sweater. Probably didn't mention it yet on this video. This is just dryer lint. With a lot of tilly hair mixed in, um, not on purpose, and lamp oil, unscented. I think it's unscented. Well, it does have a smell though. Making non bread pizza. And I'm just, this is basically cleaning the old pot from the uh, meal we made last night. I think what I'm going to do is just uh, let that dry out for two seconds. All I need is coals. I don't actually need any fire, so I'm gonna work on getting that. And non, I guess, will be the first step. Hey, back up. I got an extra pita wrap still in there. So that if that looks suspiciously like my pot, because all I did was take my lid and use it as a cookie cutter on the top of kind of an oblong shaped piece of non. Put a little oil in, just to keep it from burning, I guess. I guess what I really want is the, the non not to stick to the bottom of the pot, if possible. I'm just gonna very ceremoniously put that in the pot. Ooh, sounds good already. What do you think, pup? So I've got enough to make two of these. They are pretty small. I may, I'm not sure. So this is the Dave special pizza sauce that is already completely, ooh, good thing I double bagged it. Started a leak. All the toppings are in the sauce. So all I'm gonna do, open it up. I don't know if you can see in there. You've got mushrooms, peppers, I don't know, whatever else you put on pizza. Stuff. Ooh. Okay, so. 
splurge it on there. Mix it around, I guess. Hopefully that's in focus. Oh, so there's chorizo sausage in here as well. I'm gonna need more than that. This is taco and nacho cheese, I don't know. Seemed like a good idea at the time. That pot, pot's on a tilt, just so I can show the camera. But... Tilly loves cheese. Try to make like an oven around it. So scrape down to the bottom. Put it right there. And then bring this wood close to it, but not, not close enough that it's gonna burn pizza. Okay. This might work. I'm not sure. Yeah. There's so many ducks and geese out here. It's kind of nice. And I just put the broiler on. I think that's high, but I'm not sure. This is all an experiment. Just rotating the heat a bit. All right, well that's been about 18 minutes, I guess. There we go. Let's see. Ooh. And, yeah, 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 I think it's, it's pretty hot. It's not melted as much as maybe it could be, so. Hmm. The top is hot though. Maybe we'll put it back on for a little bit. That's an extra 10 minutes. Well, it's quite a bit better. I'm gonna call that done. Ooh. You know what happened? It went soggy. Oh, <laughs> I think that's okay though. What I could have done was, I thought it would cook the bottom more. Well, that is one of the lesser appetizing looking meals I've made. However, I guarantee it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a knife and fork pizza, isn't it? I know it doesn't look great, but it's super good. I think I needed to, to have a fire that had been going longer because when I cleared all the coals out of the way, the base wasn't hot. So, you know, basically what happened, it's sitting on almost cold ground, so it didn't cook the bottom. But conversely, if it was too hot under there, it would have just burned it before anything else got hot. This is a lesser of the two evils. So that definitely wasn't the, uh, the best meal in terms of style that I've made. However, it was really good until he's eaten all of hers and eaten all her kibble. So she found it quite, quite pleasant as well. Um, because we ate our breakfast or dessert this morning, we actually have no dessert for tonight. We're living like savages. I am stuffed though. Honestly, I, I don't feel like I could eat any more anyway. Um, we have some trail mix and you have some treats. But uh, in terms of actual dessert, we don't have anything to show you tonight. And I made a rookie mistake of anticipating that the superstore would have the dessert that I'd normally have. And they were all out again. And then the Irving that I went to to buy the pepperoni sticks didn't have any, which is rare, they usually do have them. So I promise Jay, when you come out camping, I will get the Hawkins cheesies, but they are absent on this trip. So it's a quarter after seven right now. We're gonna start packing stuff up because the wind is finally starting to drop. It said that it would. Uh, it's supposed to go down to about eight kilometers an hour tonight, which is probably what it's at now. It's way more pleasant. When I was down there cooking, it was fine. 
Well, Tilly and I have spent almost the entire trip trying to escape the wind or hide from it, put up tarps, done so much work just to escape it. It's been crazy. We feared it for the last day of our trip to the point that I was ready to uh, call it quits a night early. And now look at this. What a difference. What do you think, Pop? Would have been nice to get this on last night, eh? Well, the pup and I are pretty much ready for bed. Uh, I've just been running around trying to get all the chores done that I don't want to do tomorrow, like putting away water filters and things like that. Uh, there's a few things left to do. Most of my stuff is going to be in my bag just in the vestibule here. So it is supposed to rain overnight, I think. Um, so everything will stay dry and, and uh, I don't really need a tarp because we have the tents vestibules, which is good. It's been a good day. I can't believe we almost canceled. What a night. Tilly and I sat out by the water till about 8.30 or so, and it's pretty much nine o'clock now. So she is getting pretty sleepy. Let's go pee and go to bed. Good morning. It's seven o'clock. We had a rough night, didn't we? Want to come back in? Want to come back in? She's not really slept next to me. Well, she slept next to me. She's not really snuggled up next to me the whole time, except for this morning. I think she was a little cool. So we've been like snuggled a bit. I put her under the under the quilt for a little while. I think she really enjoyed it, didn't you? Let's put your little coat on just for this morning. Come on. Put this on just for until we get you running, okay? Um, <laughs> this is silly. Okay, I know. Uh, so she had me up at 2 a.m. I thought she was going to throw up. So we got up and rushed out. So that was fine because I went for a pee. Unfortunately, then at 4 something a.m., she threw up all over my shirt that I was planning on wearing today. So I don't know what's going to happen with that. But uh, yeah, I'm going to make oatmeal and coffee right from in ah, ah, you stay we're not going out that way anyway i'm gonna make coffee and oatmeal right from inside the tent and just boil one big pot of water make those two i think i'll let her out this way Perfect. So I've had everything pretty much laid out for this morning. Kind of. My little fancy feast stove gets fairly hot. Not not super hot on the bottom. 
but it is good to have a fire break just in case. The other thing is, is uh, it gets tippy, especially using a bigger pot like this. Oh, Sounds like our geese friends are still out there. While that's boiling, and before I forget to talk about it, here's the uh, here's the under quilt, sorry, under quilt, top quilt attachment kit. So all it is is um, there's a couple of these bands that secure your top quilt because they're open. You've got a sewn-in foot box, so the bottom is sewn in up to about two and a half feet, and then it's open. And so this clips on to your top quilt to keep it in place. Now that one's shifted now. And there's a third one I think that goes around your body at the very top. But this is all I needed. So I clipped in those two on one side and the bottom one on the other because I like to have a little bit of uh, uh, leeway with how I'm going to roll around. But that kept it underneath me the whole night. So I slept basically on my side both nights the whole time. I slept a lot better last night, but the pup woke me up a few times. Uh, anyway, I'll be definitely using those anytime I'm sleeping on a pad. It's not an issue in a hammock. Like the this quilt is, I don't know how many more inches wider than my other quilt too. That's the, the entire top of it. My other one's about this wide, but it doesn't matter in a hammock because the hammock goes around you. So, but when you're on the ground without that extra distance. I found a lot of times when I went out on that winter camp with the tent not too long ago that uh, my back would be exposed. So that wasn't great. And that's all they are. Just little straps with a couple of clips on them. And they work great. Oh, there's a whole bunch of them. There's at least three. Sometimes you get lucky when you're recording. Can they pop? Well, can you believe that we almost uh, decided to leave a day early? Look at this. This is phenomenal. Don't trust the weather. It will fool you. At least it's fooled us in the right direction. The good one. Dip our feet in. It's getting cold on the feet. The water's cool, but it's not frigid. I don't want to fall in it though. Oh. Yeah, what do you think, Pop? Yeah, let's get the stuff packed away. So it was about zero degrees overnight. Uh, the dog, she wasn't wearing her little coat for most of the time. And then just this morning when she snuggled in, I decided maybe she needed to put it on for a little bit. Now that I'm up and moving around, I think it's gonna be too hot for her. But yeah, zero degrees, very pleasant sleeping. This bag being well, way overpowered for the night. I wore um, just a, a long sleeve Heli Hansen Lifa, basically. Uh, and Patagonia Capiline 2 pants or long underwear. 
and I was a little bit too warm. I didn't wear any socks last night, but I could have uh, taken the, the top quilt off at any time. It makes me realize though that if I am going to do any summer camping, I'm not going to be able to use this bag probably, which is really too bad because it's the perfect design for uh, the summer because of uh, well, it's designed for ground sleepers. Whereas my other one, which is a lighter bag, is too narrow. It might be okay though in the summer, like you know, when you get a draft here and there, it's not as big a deal. I really enjoy having this little area to uh, sort of sprawl out in. It's, uh, it's super fun. Uh, you don't get that with the hammock, obviously. Um, and all of my gear, I packed on this side. I left this side open because I knew I was probably going to do breakfast from that side. So it just gave me the room to like put everything out. But yeah, if she hadn't got up so much last night, I would have had a fantastic sleep. I'm definitely a side sleeper when I'm in the hammock, in the, the tent though. I'm a back sleeper when I'm in the hammock because sleeping on your side is a little trickier. On the topic of things that I brought that I didn't use, my wife got me this book for Christmas, I believe. And it actually is quite interesting. It's got a lot of pictures and stuff in it, which, you know, plant pictures. Uh, oh, I got that pupper. I got that pupper. <laughs> Did you settle in? You were wrestling two seconds ago. Water girl. Okay, let's get this coat off. So I left a lot bigger pile of wood than what was here. Hopefully that'll spell good camping karma for me. It looks like it has. It's paying off already. It's even some blue sky. We may get wet yet, but that's all right. I think I've decided that I'm going to uh, just throw on, I got a short sleeve button up shirt and uh, I think I'll keep my puffy coat out or something like that if I get cold, because I don't feel like wearing Oh, stick time again. I don't feel like wearing a vomit shirt, so I'm gonna ball that up and throw it in the pack. Showtime. I just love when things when they're not designed to work with each other do. So that's my uh, MSR pot bowl. It fits onto my new hammock gear 110 mil pot. Inside that pot is my Tokes 750 mil pot. And inside that pot is my whatever, however many mils GSI travel mug. And inside that is my Fancy Feast uh, alcohol stove that Johnny made me and the fire starter. The only thing that's not in here is the filter for the coffee and the alcohol for the stove. It'll be pretty hard to find a better morning than this. Beautiful day. I was kind of hoping the loons would still be out here, but they seem to have uh, vacated. So there, you've seen the whole lake. Not sure how much fishing I'm going to do today. Like I said before, if you're following this channel for the fishing, you'd probably be disappointed. One last look.
Uh, I am starting to strip layers. Whew. I think I'm going to have to uh, rethink the long black undershirt. I don't think it's necessary. This is Porcupine Lake. We are just at the end of it here. There are a couple of rocks under here somewhere. Oh, look at this foam. That's something. That's pretty cool. So I'd say that Porcupine Lake's my favorite lake in this system going through. I'd like to explore Tittle a little bit more, it's further on up. But uh, it's just so pretty. Just this little round kind of lake with a long channel. There's not much exploring to be done. It's pretty small, but it's just so nice. Yeah, it is, that breeze is coming from the south. It's stiffening up a little bit too. That's okay, all the lakes we have to go through now are pretty small. The wind is not going to affect us. Crowbar Lake itself can sometimes get a little bit nasty, but it's so short that it doesn't matter. We can hug shorelines. There we go. Hey, hey. Tilly. Let's get him back in. Let's get him back in. Uh, just to a note to my buddy Christian, permethrin seemed to work great. Did find one tick on the dog crawling on us in the in the tent, but none on on my pants anywhere and I have been in every bramble and bush going just wandering around so I think uh, I think it's done the job yep good girl good girl so we made it to Flipper Lake. Um, right behind me there, it, right around here, is the little feed from Woody Lake. It's very short. Uh, I don't really know the name of the lake other than Flipper, unless we found it and I'd forgotten. Now we got a couple of Canada geese down here. They were in Woody Lake before, and then they saw us come in and they left. Is that them? It is. That old big box boat on the shoreline there. That marks the start of our 1200 meter portage. The big one. We're going to take our time on it, finish the day off comfortably. Try not to hit any rocks through here. This is the end or start of the portage uh, from Crowbar to, geez, I don't even know actually, I do know the name of that first lake, but I can't think of it right off the top. Tilly and I are going to have some snacks because I only have um, basically nuts, a cliff bar, 
and her treats. Now, I do have a dehydrated meal in there, but I'm not gonna make that for lunch. We're at two hours and two minutes of moving time to get to here. I think we'll just eat real quick and then press on. What do you think, yeah? Eat quick and press on? Yeah, I'm gonna be taking this undershirt off too. So we've got a, we've got a few housekeeping items to take care of. Thanks for watching everybody. Tilly and I have had a great three days out here. We're so glad we didn't cut it short. This has been by far the best day. We're both having a great time. Just caught a pretty big fish there that uh, we released as gently as we could. Um, Tilly and I may be back before too much longer. All depends on timings. There is a chance that uh, my wife and Tilly and I are going to head out into the woods for a solo night soon. But uh, if not, it might be a little while after that. I've got a little bit of vacation time before we go to England in May, and I may try to get her and I out. Who knows? Probably be a canoe trip.